Raft has some hidden secrets you probably didn't know about. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. Despite having over 700 hours in our favorite ocean floating simulator, there are still plenty of tiny hidden easter eggs, secrets, and details I'm constantly learning about. So today we're going to assemble a list of some of the best secrets in Raft that you may never have noticed or known existed. Some are pretty niche, some are a little more well known, but it's going to be a journey nonetheless. If you enjoy the video and want to see more of my content in the future, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Be much appreciated. But without further ado, let's talk about Raft, Secrets and Easter Eggs. Long-term fans of Raft will know that Redbeat originally published this basic ocean survival game on itch.io way back in 2016. They worked on it relentlessly as a three-person development team, but when it came time to move the game onto Steam for early access, Redbeat Interactive partnered with Oxalot Games to publish Raft. Oxalot Games also published and developed the popular survival sandbox game Scrap Mechanic, and that's where our little friend the Scrap Duck comes in. This is probably Raft's worst kept secret, as the trophy is a direct reference to Oxalot Games' other major project. If you want it for yourself, this little guy can only be obtained as a rare fishing treasure. You have a roughly 0.67% chance of getting this slightly pokey, cuddly buddy every time you reel in a fish. As with all good fishing loot, there is a slightly lower chance with a wooden fishing rod and a slightly higher chance with a metal rod. Once obtained, it can be displayed anywhere on your raft where trophies would normally be displayed. It's purely cosmetic and serves no purpose other than just being a comforting object in your time of dire need. Even better, there's a matching Jeremiah trophy that you can find in Scrap Mechanic for all of your multiverse crossover needs. The radio is a decorative item that you can obtain in-game one of two ways. You can either buy it from the vending machine in Tangaroa for a mere six tokens, or you can get exceptionally lucky by finding one of the two rare islands that only have a 2% chance to spawn when a new small island is loaded in. Get the boat crash island and loot the radio from there. This device is supposed to be used to play your favorite track from any of the cassette tapes you've picked up, all of which are a good time. But there's one major facet that this unassuming device that you probably didn't pay much attention to. In between playing music, occasionally the radio will fade into a pretty terrifying voice reading out in the NATO phonetic alphabet. I don't know why Redbeat decided to make these voices so creepy, but the actual messages they're conveying aren't nearly as bad. First is the ever so popular portal reference. The goat is a lie. Of course, this is an homage to the best game Valve has ever made with the cake is a lie meme that took over the internet in 2008, and because Raft doesn't have any kind of cake-like food item, clearly the goat has to take the fall for this one. No companion cube for you. The second message is definitely something that you've heard referenced before, but you may not understand where it comes from. This message decodes to all your refs are belong to us, which is actually a reference to the 1989 Japanese arcade game Zero Wing, with its infamous English translation, all your base are belong to us. Raft is riffing off this classic meme to bring us yet another all-time favorite gaming reference into our floating ocean simulator. It's no secret that a lot of Raft's player-held items have a special animation that accompany their respective item type, like the way you drink a bowl of soup or eat several pounds of raw fish in one gulp. My personal favorite is the animation for holding a clucker, frankly because it looks ridiculous and doesn't make a lot of sense when compared to the first-person view. But despite the vast majority of animations coming alongside items that you're meant to use in some way, like your hook or your axe, there's one special exception that most people won't notice or even pay attention to, the banana. Now, we all know that bananas have two practical uses as a prop, a telephone or a gun. Raft went with the latter, adding in a small extra animation that makes your character have a little Wild West moment with this yellow fruit. This animation is visible both in third person and in first person, although weirdly the animations aren't synced, so if you're playing with a friend, they might see you do it while you don't and vice versa. It's a simple three second animation that has a chance to be triggered every time you switch to a banana as your held item. All in all, this is a pretty niche detail that I think is pretty funny, yet it's a secret because so few people will ever get to see it in their games. This next easter egg is definitely one of the more obscure references you'll find in Raft, and it's pretty well hidden. Starting from the front of the reactor on Temperance, you'll need to follow down the mountain to the right boulder all the way down to the relay tower at the base. Then take the narrow path hugging the cliffside until about halfway up when you hit the suspiciously clumped pile of rocks. Once you're there, if you look carefully at the ice cliff, you'll find a small opening that's too narrow for the player to fit through, but glancing inside reveals something that resembles a baby blue game console and controller. Now, this isn't your ordinary game console. This is no PS5 or Xbox whatever number they're on now. This is a fictional game console that was created by content creator Wayne Radio TV called the Game Clam. Complete with its 1980s era big solid colored buttons and strange layout, 
this controller could hardly be anything else. According to the announcement for the console hosted on Scorpius Twitch channel in 2020, the game's claim is mined from Antarctic ice and originates from an alternate dimension. That alternate dimension may very well be the one Raph takes place in, because hidden deep in the ice and temperance is where the controller for the game clam rests. This console is entirely fictional and seems to be a kind of wide-scale April Fool's joke from Wayne Radio TV and a few other creators, and its only physical copy is now under a doomed nuclear reactor hidden at the South Pole. I have no clue why the devs thought this would be the perfect reference for an Easter egg for Raft, but they did. And now you too can find it buried in the ice if you look hard enough. There are six secret items that are impossible to obtain in your standard survival playthrough and require a mod menu to spawn in even in creative mode. The first is completely useless. It's a placeholder blank for something called Titanium Tools, which is not to be confused with the Titanium Tools blueprint that you'll find when finishing the game. This item is a blank space that does literally nothing, which isn't the case for the rest of these strange items. The scrapped glass is identical to normal glass, but unobtainable in normal gameplay. The next two items are also placeholders, but these also have physical models. The full and half spiral staircases are hidden items that are wood textured solid models of the full and half cheap wooden staircase but the name implies that they were meant to be a lot more. Specifically, the spiral staircases hint that there were planned changes or additions to the build menu, which I still want added to the game, personally. Nothing like a few round shapes to spruce up the hard angles and lines we've been stuck with for so long. But the last two hidden items are the more exciting ones. Next is that little dev hat, which is basically what you would get if you stuck police lights inside of a tiny bowler cap. The hat is comically small for all of the characters' heads, so it's a funny item to screw around with, but it serves no practical purpose other than signifying someone is a developer. And finally, the most useful item by far, which is the OP weapon. The name does not lie, this thing is definitely overpowered. In a single hit, it deals a measly 99,999 damage, which is enough to one-shot Mama Bear more than 130 times over, so you could say it does a little bit of damage. It also cuts sushi like a boss according to its item description. Interestingly, the OP weapon is also the only way to deal physical damage to the Rhino Shark at Varuna Point. Normally, the shark can only be damaged by the pillars and explosive barrels that the player uses to solve the multi-level puzzle, and your standard weapons do nothing to the shark's 40 HP health bar. But for some reason, the OP weapon can decimate the shark in a single hit. It will respawn after a couple minutes, so there's no need to worry about softlocking yourself. Not that you could anyways, because again, you can't get any of these items without a mod menu, and that's what keeps them secret. If you're a Raft completionist, chances are you'll definitely know about this next secret, but it can be hard to deduce if you haven't looked into all of the game's secret achievements. Treasure hunting for late game resources, dev paintings, and cassettes can be annoying, but the rarest treasure type comes with an additional secret of its own. When you dig up a treasure spot, you have a 7.5% chance of getting one of the four tiki pieces. You'll need all four pieces to complete your tiki pull, and that's only if you assemble them in a certain order. Look carefully at the top and bottom of each tiki face to determine that secret order. The big grin is on the bottom, and the green strip in the middle of its leaf hat connects to the green goatee on the piece with its tongue out. That white headpiece connects to the white goatee on the shocked piece, and that blue strip on the headpiece connects to the blue goatee on the final top tiki piece. Assembling the tiki pieces in this exact order sparks a special animation and unlocks a very rare item that isn't obtainable via any other method, the tiki mask. While this mask has no decidedly special properties, it requires an insane amount of dedication to get that only roughly 0.9% of RAF players have put in, making this a pretty well-kept secret. Although even the sheer dedication of the Tiki Mask pales in comparison to Raf's true rarest item, the Golden Robot. Continuing with our treasure hunting theme, when you dig up the safe treasure type, you have a 2.3% chance of getting a toy robot as one of the 4-6 to six potential extra items from that safe. That alone makes it the single rarest item you can get from treasure hunting, but we could take it one step further. Of those toy robots, 5.2% will spawn as the ultra-rare Golden Toy Robot. That means that when you loot a safe, you have a roughly 0.5% chance of getting this super rare cosmetic item. And it does literally nothing other than look cool and slightly menacing with its glowing red eyes despite there being no batteries inside. This item is so incredibly rare that there isn't even an achievement for it. The Golden Toy Robot is a legendary item for all 100% seekers and a myth to all the rest, making it one of the most secret items in the game. Between Raf's eight carefully crafted story locations, it should come as no surprise that three quarters of them have special hidden loot boxes and collectibles for all of you loot goblins out there. Starting with the yacht, whose name I can never accurately pronounce, there are two metal toolboxes with plenty of loot waiting for you at both vertical extremes of the ship. 
The one on top can only be looted by locking your FPS at 30 and pulling a frame delayed jump in single player, or by jumping off of a friend's head in multiplayer. The second one is hidden off of the right side of the back of the ship, deep down in a little hole that was inaccessible before Chapter 3. Balboa Island hides a few extra of those wooden loot crates on top of the relay towers, and there's even an extra food box in Bruno's ranger station. Caravan Town hides a secret safe. Yes, the kind that you can use to get all of the dev paintings or the rare golden robot we talked about earlier, just a corner away from the bottom of the sea where you'd find the last zipline part. Caravan Town also has the game's ultimate rare item, Major Tom, as he is the only story-relevant item that doesn't respawn, so there's only one of him in a world. Tankaro is where things get a bit interesting, as there are two achievements tied to finding secret rooms. The first is hidden in the box maze, where if you line up your pathway to go through the gap in the crates underneath the control center, you'll get some extra titanium and a machete, but if you pay really close attention, you'll notice an extra hidden button in the top left corner of the main elevator. Pressing it brings you 20 floors down to the security station, which houses a special cassette and plenty of loot, including another exclusive safe. Maruna Point is more or less known for its weird loot stashes in the form of grabber caches, but there are even more additional loot boxes like the one way at the back of the crane or all the way at the top of the tower. Temperance has the sunken radioactive caverns that become accessible after neutralizing the reactor. Or you could just take one really fun snowmobile ride and take the leap of faith over this gap to the right coming out of town and get yourself some extra loot that way. Technically, the Radio Tower and Utopia also have loot in places, but none of it is out of the way or particularly well hidden enough to be worthy of the secret title. So for now, those are all the secret loot stashes you can find when exploring these story locations. And those are Raph's best secrets and easter eggs that you probably didn't know existed. Maybe you knew some of them, but not others, or maybe all of this was news to you. Raft may not be as jam-packed with this kind of secret as other games, but there are still plenty of hidden details if you know where to look. And if you don't know where to look, I guess that's what I'm here for. Maybe there are some that even I don't know, so you should definitely leave those down in the comments if you have any secrets or easter eggs to share. Anyways, I think that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day. Bye.